Let's get us a hymn book. Turn to number 277. 277. Let us stand. seated. The choir singing, he'll call my couch.
Thank you, choir. Let's all stand together, turn around and greet someone as the choir comes down. Teenagers, you may come up in just a moment. So good to see you in the Lord's house tonight. And if you're visiting with us, we're sure glad you're here. And I thank you for being here by web live stream. If you're watching, thank you for taking time to do so. And good to have our teen choir behind us. And glad they made it home safely. Amen. And I'm so thankful for that. Have some keys up here. Please get them before I accidentally put them in my pocket and have an extra set. All right. So you get them right there. I don't know whose they are, but uh, somebody's house, I guess. You can get in up here. And uh, so you might need those. Um, just a couple more announcements. Uh, Easter play Sunday, April the 5th at uh, um, 6 o'clock. I think it says 7 here. It'll be 6 o'clock uh, for you. And boy, a lot of works went into this. And we put out an email. Should be getting an email, an email blast, excuse me, out soon on that. And we've got some flyers as well. And excited about it. Thank the Lord for it. And those who are doing it, you pray. And, and uh, us to pray and ask the Lord uh, to speak to our hearts through this. And uh, thank, thank the Lord for all who are helping, participating. Pray for Brother Mark. He's got the flu tonight. And he's sick. So you pray for him. That's what, that's what going to New York City with a bunch of teenagers will do for you. Amen? All right. Um, also, the inspiration is 7 o'clock Friday night, April the 10th, and be, be uh, getting the word out there. We have some posters if you frequent a high traffic area daily, and they would let you put a poster up. We would love for you to do so. Uh, Miss Carla can get you one of those. Uh, just has a time, date, and place on it, and a picture of the inspirations, but we'll be having a great time here uh, Friday, April 10th at 7 o'clock, then the charity golf tournament on the 11th, then the play at gospel light is also on the 11th at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock this play uh, that went on a lot of our kids are in it tons of our kids are in there and uh, what a blessing I would encourage you to go to it if you uh, make plans uh, it's not uh, to commandeer some young person is for the let the Lord speak to your heart because I guarantee you uh, he will and God used this young lady mightily uh, to, uh, to write and uh, to stand for God in difficult days. And so uh, you, you make plans to attend uh, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock on uh, April the 11th. And then Saturday, April 18th, Family Fun Day. Then Carnival Sunday on the 19th. Be inviting, inviting, inviting folks 
to that day uh, to come out to the property on the 18th. We'll have blow-ups, games, other, all kinds of stuff going on, and uh, you want to be a part of that. I believe that's all the announcements I have, and the choir is going to sing. And one more play practice will be at uh, Saturday at 7 o'clock, Miss Anna, and then 6 o'clock if you're going to eat, and she'll have food provided, but please see her if you're going to eat so that she knows to have enough food. Brother Ronnie Venable, good to see you here tonight. Amen. And I go ahead and, and say that before I forget to say it. I'm glad you're here. And continue to pray for him. He'll be having a heart calf on the 6th. Is that right? If the insurance, if the insurance approves it. Another plug for our faithful Obamacare. Amen. <laughs> All right. You pray for the choir and as they sing tonight. May the Lord bless you. Amen.
going to come down and join us here in a second. We'll get ready for our offering. And while they do, Brother James, go ahead and fire up the uh, projectors. And uh, we'll just get ready to see if we can show these pictures here in a second. We've got a few announcements. We have an offering and all that we'll take care of tonight And uh, as we go. Well, how's your uh, happy April Fool's Day? Anybody get April Fooled yet? Uh, with uh, my, my kids tried to get mom this uh, morning and got her pretty good. And I know the Bible says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. But mom's got a few things up her sleeve I'm afraid of. So y'all pray for the Fredericks house if you could. And uh, so that'd be great. Um, well, let me do say this, that uh, in addition to the announcements we made with the inspirations being on the 10th, I do want to let the church know next Wednesday we're going to try something. Uh, Brother Chris had called me. What we want to do is if you were ever in the Freedom Youth Club, so it's like alumni night is what we're calling it. So, uh, <clears throat> and really in our youth group, half of them have grown up through Freedom Youth Club and the other half didn't. So what we'd like to do is if you are have been a part of Freedom Youth Club and you've graduated out obviously to the youth group and now maybe as a young adult, uh, we want to have an alumni night at the game floor next week. So if you could go there just for the pledges, they want to recognize you and let the young kids see you. Then what we're going to do is uh, the kids then will divide up into their verses. Then uh, just like a normal Wednesday when it's handshaking time, instead of the teens, you all going to the uh, youth room, we'll go to the fellowship hall and uh, we'll have teen choir practice out there then when we're done the kids will join us from youth club and the teenagers will all be together and brother Dave Vanderford's dad's gonna come down and he'll be here next Wednesday and do some chalk art drawing and uh, give us a Bible lesson it'll be a wonderful time so next week if you're a alumni from the Freedom Youth Club if you can meet at 7 o'clock with everyone else out there then uh, the 18th is the family fun day we're calling it we could use your help we're gonna have sign up sheets uh, beginning Sunday if you can volunteer volunteer an hour of time. Uh, we're going to have six to eight inflatables spread out. There'll be uh, a handful for like kids sixth grade and below or we may even do elementary and then just even younger. Uh, we have two bounce houses for that. Then we have some other ones and I want to make sure we get some young adults who can sign up to help monitor those for us. If you want to sign up the Family Fund Day will go 10 to about 3-ish and if you could sign up in hour increments or half hour increments we'll take what we can get but some of those things they have what's called the wrecking ball. There's four little stations on this bounce house and you just push it around and last man standing wins uh, a bungee run a huge slide just some great things out there and then in addition to that we're gonna have some I don't want to call them kitty games but some games up here in this back parking lot area anything from a, 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 a papa shot type game where you shoot a basket uh, brother Jeff Tuttle has volunteered he's gonna get the tractor reared up get it ready to go and we'll have a hay ride going around the whole property for the kids to go on on that and of course you can't have a day like that without a dunk tank and and uh, so we'll need some volunteers. Now, what's the cost for all this? About every station you go to will have a uh, coda for Zane. Everything's donation, okay? Even the food. Um, we'll have a food station down by the picnic shelter, but we'll make them go through a line and walk by a table with that uh, picture of Zane and, and a bucket there and maybe some girls to monitor that table. Everything is donations going for the heart transplant for Zane. Even the car show. Uh, I, I'm taking not a car show, cruise in. Uh, we've got some fellas bringing their cars down in the lower parking lot and they'll be out there. So if you want to uh, bring some friends and look at those and see all those, again, even they are bringing a donation to help with all this for the heart transplant. So a lot of things going on with those. If you have any questions about any of that, you can see me and I'd be glad to answer them as best as I can. Brother James, how's it look up there? Any good? <laughs> Woo! Boy, I tell you what. And, uh, it's still warming up. Is that what it's doing? Man, we were here this afternoon for about 90 minutes. What we need to do is we got all these toys and no one knows how to use them. Well, let me take it back. Brother Eddie and Brother Derek know how to use them, but we just have to set up a meeting to sit with them. I'm looking at this going, what is this? No, you push it, James. No, you put, no, I don't want, well, well. and so we had this thing flying and rolling, and uh, we were going to show you some pictures from the trip, and maybe we'll do it after the message. Maybe we'll do it next year. Maybe we'll, do whoa, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
I'm going to turn my lapel mic on. Let's see. Well, let's take our offering. Can we do that first? And then uh, after that, Brother uh, James, I'll turn my lapel mic on. We'll go through the pictures. Then after that, we'll have the special. So let me get four guys up here for our offering, if we could. Isaac, thank you. There's one. Don't all come at one. All my other ushers are in the special behind me, aren't they? All right. Here comes another one. Thank you, Austin. And uh, that'll be good. Let's see. You guys are up here, aren't you? Yeah, the whole corral's up here. All right, Daniel, I'm going to recruit you to take the offering. And hey, we got another. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate it. Daniel's a, a teen at heart. And uh, same height. That's right. You said it. You said it. I thought it, but you said it. That's Everybody else thought it, too. Everybody else thought it, too. Let's pray for the offering, and then after that, we'll go through these slides, and we'll have the special and enjoy the service tonight. Father, thank you so much for the midweek service. I pray right now, God, for the offering that we take. And, Lord, over the next few Wednesdays, everything that's not designated for tithes or offerings will go to our uh, Bahama missions trip for the teenagers. I pray, God, you would utilize that money and utilize the offerings. I know our teens are working hard to raise money other ways, and I pray they'd be able to do that, and it wouldn't be a big cost. Bless the remainder of our service. Bless those who are sick. Oh, God, it seems as we transition from winter to spring, we'd be ready to go, but it's just one last bout that uh, several are going through. I pray you touch their bodies, heal them. And then, Lord, anoint this service. Lord, be with us these next few moments as we uh, meet with you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. my mind we'll show the slide let's have the special because all these teenagers are going to get a crick in their neck if they turn around and try to look at those pictures so uh, if you want to take your bibles you can turn to the book of mark uh, let's see here mark chapter 12 and we'll use the scripture much tonight and uh, young people go ahead and come up and get ready they'll sing for you and uh, boy they were a blessing uh, this past weekend I know I'm gonna talk about it but really the main reason I, I was just asked to preach but Pastor Joe Vasek, who was with us at our camp meeting, uh, really wants some revival to take place in Danbury, Connecticut. And he believes it'll help and start with his young people. And so we asked if we could bring our teen choir, and we came, and we, we sang like we normally do. But, but man, it was to be a vision for their church of what could be. And uh, he kept go echoing, saying how much of a blessing. And they were. They were tremendous all throughout the trip, and especially during that youth revival. And so they're going to sing for us, and then I'll come back. We'll go through the pictures, and then we'll go through the message. But uh, teenagers, uh, go ahead and sing out like you did this past week.
you young people and uh, go ahead and have a seat. We'll go through these pictures and again just to let those of you know we left last Wednesday night after church, drove through the night, went up to the northeast and uh, the goal was to spend the day in New York City and then after that drive up to Danbury, Connecticut where the youth revival would be and so we got in late that night and then Friday kind of slept in a little bit, <clears throat> had some breakfast, went to a local mall for lunch and then went to the youth rally and uh, had a great time there. So let's talk through this real quick. Uh, back up one picture or two, Brother James. First of all, let me say this. Thank you to the church. First of all, <laughs> excuse me. Um, first of all, uh, Brother Jeff Tuttle and Brother Jerry Beeson did a great job of making sure the vehicles were ready to go. And uh, in fact, there was a part, I don't know, a hose, something under it. I know Brother Jeff made several phone calls. Brother Jerry made more phone calls. And by the time we found we we can. Can someone make a piece? Can someone do this? Can someone do that? And they finally got a piece, and it was put in, I think, Tuesday afternoon, Brother Jerry. Is that about when you screwed that thing on and got it all bolted down? And uh, so thank you for that. Then, when we got ready to pull out, we got, uh, we had Miss Peggy had cooked a meal for us, and then we got out of that meal and <clears throat> got on the vehicles. And you can see uh, what they're holding in their hands, and then even up along the, the, the area at the top, all these little notes, the youth club had put those in there for us and decorated with different words of encouragement, sing out, sing for the Lord, uh, we're praying for you, just a ton of words of encouragement uh, from the youth club to us. And then so we got on the road and started to head out. Are we stuck? Is it frozen back there? Amen. Well, God doesn't want us to see these right now. And uh, all right, let's take our Bibles then. Man, that stinks, doesn't it? And uh, oh well. Well, I can't wait for that meeting, Derek, me, you, Brother Workman, everybody. We can't blame it on Mark. He's homesick, isn't he? Well, just tell him it was his fault, okay? He won't know the difference, so. All right. Well, good. I was in a bad mood anyway. I told preacher, I said, I'm not going to cuss, but I think I may write a few down on paper. Just, ooh. Anyway. All right. Let's take our Bibles as we talk through this. <laughs> Thank you, Brother uh, Keith. And uh, just a good meeting, though. I will say this. As we drove up to the city, uh, just like that song said, we got to the church. We drove straight into Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I had called a friend that I had not seen since college. And I knew he was an assistant pastor there at International Baptist Church. And all I said was, uh, we want to tour the city. Can, can we use your church to park our vehicles? You got a bus, a van, and then my vehicle because we stayed up there for the weekend to preach. So the teenagers came home. And he says, not a problem. I haven't talked to him in 25 years. And just like... It was yesterday, Zena. He goes, yeah, yeah, bring your vehicles. Park them here. No problem. And not only that, I told him my goal. We, w we went on four different subways to tour the city. And uh, he, he walked with us from the church. We got changed. He gave us tracks to hand out uh, while we're in the city. We, we uh, loaded up our... All, here's the How do you get 44 people on and off subways? Well, you give one adult three kids. All right, so we had enough chaperones. First of all, that was a blessing. And so what they do is as soon as the train goes up, I'm in charge of my three. I don't mean this bad. I couldn't care less where everyone else is. I've got to get these three on. And I really let our chaperones know, Justin, if you don't get on with those three, we'll never see you again. I mean, New York City, 25 million people in a 20-mile radius, right? So there's a lot of people. And so it worked out great. We got on and off and took the Staten Island Ferry, went right by the Brooklyn Bridge and the Statue of Liberty. It was so foggy, you couldn't see it though. But uh, uh, we tried to take a picture and played a game. Yeah, there it is. I think you can see it. And uh, then walked up by Wall Street and saw Ground Zero. I was very excited about Ground Zero and very, uh, oh, I don't, I'm very well pleased with how our kids saw it. I mean, it was just like sobering and just thinking as we saw those two fountains that represent where each tower were. And I had been there before, but I had forgotten how huge those things were. And uh, there's still, there, there, there's a tree there that's surrounded by a little gate that they don't want you really to touch. It's still supported. They call it the Lone Survivor Tree. All those buildings fell down in that six block radius and that one tree was untouched. And so they dug it up, took it out, nourished it some more over several months and and put it right back in the very same place where it was as a reminder of faithfulness and still moving on and going forward. 
And then from there, we walked some more. Man, I don't know. someone said they, they, they had this thing on their phone that they thought we walked seven miles. I, I, it had to be at least 30. But uh, it was a lot. And uh, then we took the next subway to Times Square and got out there and just knowing what takes place there on New Year's Eve. And you can see that ball that drops there and everything. We, that's where we divided up into groups again and worked our way up Fifth Avenue and Central Park. And uh, that was a neat area, the Apple Store. The sun finally peeked through. It was really dri drizzly all day and gray and cloudy and the sun was starting to peek through about 5, 5.15 and man that sun just shot down on my forehead and I was like brother Jerry it got me. Driving through the night most of the day I was come on kids let's go but I was like I could lay down right here on the sidewalk for about 30 minutes and not worry one bit, man. And uh, so a little bit tired, but then got that third or fourth or fifth wind. I don't know what it was, Brother Daryl, but, but uh, it took over again. We had just left the, the uh, what was that hotel called? The... Uh, the Plaza Hotel, yeah. And uh, they filmed uh, Christmas movies there and everything. It's where Home Alone was. And so all the girls wanted their pictures taken by the Plaza Hotel. And uh, they went to F.A.O. Schwartz. There was a little toy soldier, a real man, but dressed like a toy soldier. And people went over. He danced with one of our girls. Uh, I think he got down on a knee and proposed to one of the girls. And um, so that was just entertaining. Then we worked our way back on a subway, back down to downtown in, in Chinatown area in Little Italy. I was looking for cannolis and my wife took about all the girls and found that one Chinese lady, you know, and walked in that store. And she's like, hello, perfume, you want earring? My wife's like, coach purses, Michael Kors purses, you know, all the black market stuff, you know, it's like, oh, oh I'm not just, then she hit some button and like the wall slid over, man, it's like, okay, come, come, everybody come downstairs, do everyone right now, come, 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 man, I don't know how many girls they had, but they all went down there, then they pushed the button and the door locks behind, I didn't know all this, but the door locks behind you and you get all your bootleg Rolex and again, coach, Michael Kors, whatever, I don't know, I'm whatever, you know, and so they get all these purses and stuff and then they all walk out and man, the girls were on cloud nine, man. They got their shopping and they're like, woo -hoo -hoo, ready to go. And then uh, we took one more subway ride back to International Baptist Church and Brother Carlos, uh, my friend, uh, he had lined up and helped us to get Brooklyn style pizza. And so that was all set up for us when we got back to the church and our kids ate. And uh, to thank them, we sang for them there at the church and then got back on the road. Now, Brother Jeff, here's what I'm going to tell you right now. Then we worked our way out of the city up to Danbury, Connecticut. Um, Brother Dar <laughs> live and learn, right, Brother Daryl? We were using my GPS. I'm in my car leading the way. The van is behind me. The shuttle bus is behind the van. Okay, I know that, but I'm just looking. Okay, I'm taking this road. It tells me go, go. I don't want to say I'm not paying attention to the signs on the side that Brother Robert Bullinger and Brother Mark Anders, who were driving my bus, later told me is like, you know, passenger vehicles only on this route and uh, no oversized. I never saw those. I was just looking at my GPS making sure we were going to get where we needed to go. We wound up driving out of New York City and getting up to um, oh, Winchester and Browning and Brewster and right northern New York, southern Connecticut area where it's the historical areas. And they have those stone bridges, much like the bridges at Blue Ridge Parkway that we've seen. It's beautiful and they're arched just like this. And Brother Todd, as we're driving our beautiful church charter bus, I noticed on the side it said overhead clearance 12 feet 2 inches. So we sent a text message back, 12 2 is good, right? And I got a response, yep, no problem. And we drove a few more miles, it said 11 6. This isn't getting good, Brother Daryl. Next bridge was 10 4. Now, I don't know what happened, but we got to a bridge, and we have a picture of it. Brother Robert, just to make sure he wasn't seeing things, he went to Google Maps, found a picture of that exact area where the bus was, where it says, clearance, 9 feet, 2 inches. Now, my guess is that that's the lowest part of the bridge. 
Either that or God did like the Willy Wonka thing to our shuttle and that shuttle just got real small, went under the bridge and then just got, I don't know how we went through it, but Brother Robert, I mean, it's 55 mile an hour on this highway and he comes to a stop almost. <laughs> and I just know I made it and the van made it and the bus is at a stop. I'm thinking, man, we're coming back with a convertible and uh, I don't know what's going to happen. And again, we made it, got all the way through. I told the pastor what happened. He was shocked. He said two things. One, I can't believe you made it. Two, I can't believe you didn't get a ticket. There's officers all the time out there stopping oversized vehicles. And I said, well, maybe God was just watching over my idiocy. I don't know. But uh, anyway, Brother Jeff, I told you you think I'm an idiot, but I, I was just following the GPS on that. But uh, then, of course, Friday, the kids did a good job. They, they brought us up early. And we had dinner. And then as their teenagers showed up, you would have been proud of your kids. They weren't stuck up snobs, just us talking over here. They were me meeting new folks from the north. They were meeting new folks. Now, they weren't exchanging phone numbers or anything. Don't worry, folks, all right? But they were just very cordial, very friendly. There's a sweet spirit, and our kids got to participate. They had some games and everything going on, and the kids did great. Well, uh, I think we, uh, we really befuddled the pastor there, Brother Vasek. He was doing this game where he asked a question, and I think Stephen Hopkins had the question. It was like, where is the magnificent mile located you know and so he goes we'll give you an answer. is it Chicago New York Rule Hall or Los Angeles <laughs> and Stephen said Rule Hall <laughs> That's the, that's the area in Chicago, right along Lakeshore Drive, where it's a magnificent mile. They say if a woman can walk down that part of Chicago without buying anything, it's a miracle. And uh, that's a magnificent mile. And here's Stephen. Uh, rule hall. And uh, the pastor just went, I was giving you the... Anyway, so that was a nice mess. But the sweetest part was when the, the meeting was done and we had said goodbye, well, most of us said goodbye, was uh, some of our kids got around a piano. And then a few more kids got around the piano and a few more. And we were just having a little singspiration after the service. Just kind of flipping through the song book, trying this song, trying that song. Brother Mark had taken, the, he got the bus fired up, Jimmy. He had about half the teenagers out there. The other half of us are up here singing and stuff. He comes up going, <laughs> how long has this been going on? I said, ever since the thing's been over. He says, well, all, most of the people are on the bus. I said, well, who told them to load up? And he goes, <laughs> And uh, so they all wound up coming up. Then the Vasek family started singing. And we just, and it was, about, I'm pretty sure it was about 11 o'clock when someone says, shouldn't we be going back to the hotel? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'd rather stay here a lot longer. Then they'll just fall asleep at the hotel. And uh, man, it was just a sweet, sweet time. And then that Saturday morning to say goodbye. And they got back home that night about 9, 1030, 1045, I think. And uh, just great. Thank you to the chaperones. You did an awesome job. It was, I don't want to say it was easy. Easy, but but it was easy and just you all taking care of your parts and the kids were great mom and dad they did a good job of listening um, you know there's a few things here or there then you talk to a, 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 a kid and say hey let's do okay yes sir you know I mean it was great attitudes I had to get on two guys for being too godly what um, and here I am guilty, I think, Christy, right? On Friday night, I was talking about, it's about time we speak up for the Lord and not be ashamed of God and do all this and that. I woke up Saturday morning, Brother Jimmy, there was a track under my hotel door in my room. I was looking for the bill. I got a track. I went out by the elevator in the morning, and there's little tables and couches out there, and there's tracks out there too. I went, oh, no. I bet some of our kids just went to every room in the hotel and just slid tracks under it. They're speaking of thy testimonies or making the name of the Lord known, which is good, but, but you can't go on private property and just start throwing stuff around like that. And uh, I talked to them and I said, listen, I'm, I'm not mad, but I'm just, we might get a few phone calls down there in Rule Hall. And, uh, and they were like, oh, we're so, so, I said, well, you know, if that's the worst thing you did, it'll be okay when it's all over. But just a good spirit, good group of kids. I want to say that happens not, not, not on accident. Thank God for Freedom Baptist Church, but just Freedom Baptist Church in and of itself doesn't turn out a good kid or a bad kid. It's a team effort. There are three major influencers in the life of a young person. School, church, and home. Those are the three main influencers. 
And I want to talk this evening, if I could, I'll get right into it. We have been going through a book that I've read years ago and then have reread it. It's called Core Values. It's written by Zell Miller. Zell Miller is a former governor and U.S. Senator in the state of Georgia. He uh, graduated high school, age 19, 20, started to, he grew up in church, started to sow his, his wild oats, he even wrote and sang. And he said at age 21 or 22, when he was released from prison, finally, he was sitting in the back seat of his car and he saw a billboard. We don't recruit men, we make men. Join the Marines. And uh, it was at that time of his life where he felt and says he hit rock bottom. They said, all right, he's joining the Marines. And as a result of the boot camp and the years he served there, he then, after he was finished and ran uh, for political office locally and then became the governor and so forth, then wrote this book, which basically states, everything I learned in life, I learned from the core, is what he says. And he gives these things that we've talked about here on Wednesday nights. We've talked about neatness. He said, boy, you talk about being neat and folding those sheets right and being able to bounce. He says, boy, you had to learn about neatness in the core. We talked about that in our youth group. He talked about punctuality. He talked about brotherhood, how good and wonderful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. He talked about persistence. He talked about respect. He talked about courage. And I took these core values, C-O-R-P-S values, and then I gave the teenagers some core values, C-O-R-E, from Scripture. And said, everything this man learned from the Marines, we can also learn from the Bible. And so we've been spending these weeks on this. And last week we spoke of courage. And he spoke of a guy he called Top who was a man who uh, survived through POW camps and this and that and said that he's the top of his list on courage. And I tried to explain to our youth group that top on my list is Zane Snyder. And the courage it takes for that boy to get up every day and to try to go about his business and just to survive. And I said the sad thing is most times you don't appreciate someone until they're gone. And boy, we want to set up monuments and flowers and all these things outside the house of a celebrity who's passed away. Or we want to do all the same things to an athlete who's passed away. And we do all that. Yeah, and I said to them, I said, why do we have to wait till someone's gone? He lives right up the road. He could take it right to his door. We have technology that says you can text him in the morning and tell him you're praying for him. You can call him and even talk to him. One of the most courageous people I've met, Zane Snyder. Do we show our appreciation for him? We spoke about that last week. And then this week, the core value is responsibility. Now, like I do every week, I take excerpts from Zell Miller's book, and then I go right into my message. So let me read, if I could, some excerpts. And he writes this, To me, responsibility means individuals can have anything they want out of life if... They are willing to work hard enough to earn it. One can be a star basketball player if one practices hard enough. One can make good grades in school if one studies long and hard enough. Perhaps the, <coughs> excuse me, perhaps it's the single flaw in the fabric of today's society is that too few seem to understand or accept that basic concept for living successful, meaningful, and contributing lives. Many people today seem to want everything given to them. Children don't want to lead disciplined lives. Students don't want to study. Few people, it seems, want to work, and especially not if the task is hard or the hours are long. Responsibility, personal and collective, is one of the first lessons taught to Marine Corps recruits. And it is so thoroughly drummed into the minds, hearts, and souls of those who make it through boot camp. Responsibility is what life is all about. And it should not be easy to shirk or discard, that, discard responsibility like last year's fashions. Responsibility to me means conducting oneself in a fashion that if one's conduct does not contribute to the betterment of society, at least it does not denigrate its goals or depreciate its values in any way. 
Now this is a very strong word used in the life of an individual, but how much more should the word responsibility be used in the life of a Christian? Now here's where it comes down to, well, what is my responsibility? Well, teenagers, first of all, let me say this. Your responsibilities, and we'll get to everybody, but normally I start off with the teens here. But your responsibility as a young person growing up in the home of your mother and your father is to honor and obey. Amen. Honor and obey. That is what your responsibility is. Now, here's the crazy part. Mom, Dad... What are they to obey? You see, the relationship of children to parents is very similar to that of husband and wife. Preachers will get up and pound home the fact, Hey, women, it's time that you submit to your husbands. And I understand that's biblical. But I also understand that it's hard for a woman to submit when there's no leadership. Yeah. Right? We understand that. That, that. that we tell all the gazeldas across the world that she must submit, but the Ralphs don't want to lead. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Just, you know, I don't know. Well, come on. It's hard to submit when there's no leadership. But can I tell you what's frustrating to a young person, mom and dad? When they don't know what the set rules are to obey. Right? I mean, their responsibility. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God given thee. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Okay, great. Children, it's your responsibility to obey and to honor. But mom and dad, what are they supposed to obey? Do we have rules for certain things, or is everything situational? I'm not here to say, kids, you can just do whatever you want. I'm here to say, make it plain for your son or your daughter as to what is right and what is wrong. And don't just make it up as you go because nobody likes playing with that person. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, that, that, that's a two-pointer. A three-pointer is when I shoot it. It's a two-pointer when you shoot it. And then when I shoot it left-handed, it's a five-pointer. And then when I make it all net, it's a seven-pointer. And if you shoot it when I'm not looking, it's points for me. And we just make rules up as we go. What is acceptable in the house? What is not acceptable in the house? Well, they do this. I'm not asking what they do. I'm saying as for me in my house, what is acceptable for Junior to obey or disobey? <laughs> Responsibility. Oh, I think your kids ought to obey. I think your kids ought to honor. And if they don't, there should be some discipline action. I may have to move on this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> there are three main influencers in the life of a child. The school, the church, and the home. Say what you want about school. Whether it's home school, public school, private school, Christian school, any school. The goal is all the same. Educate. Now you may not like the way, the route, the this and that. But the end goal is to educate. It's one plus one is two. Five times five is 25. The capital of California is Sacramento. The capital of North Carolina is Raleigh. Then uh, when in the course of human events, and boy, we, that, that is to educate and to put information in their minds so they can contribute to society. School is to educate. You may not like a dress code. You may not like the way they do this. You may not like the way they do that. But by and large, at the end result is still to educate. The goal of church. I don't need to spend time on this, especially if you've been paying close attention on Sunday nights as our preacher's been going through the book of Acts. 
and been teaching us the purpose of the church, the power of the church, the people of the church. And as he goes on and on and on, you don't have to wait and go, what are we supposed to do? He's been teaching us for the last six Sunday nights, except the one Sunday Brother Baker was here, but he's been teaching us what is the purpose of the church and my role in the church. But by and large, generally speaking, the, the school is education. The church is spiritual. The church is not entertainment. The church is not time filler. You know, just as uh, I always, uh, always get just baffled when I hear people going, I can't believe that Hollywood movie they put out on the life of Noah was so biblically inaccurate. Or I can't believe that TV show on Discovery about the life of Christ, they miss so many things. Are you really surprised that going to Hollywood, they're going to get doctrine wrong? Does that really surprise you? Well, I'm just voicing my opinion. You know, as crazy as it is to go to Hollywood for our doctrine, how much crazier is it to come to the church house for entertainment? Woo! Yeah, come on, everybody! Everybody, come on, let's go, let's go! Let's give Jesus! Are you serious? Go to 24-hour fitness for that. I ain't going to Hollywood for doctrine. I ain't coming to the church for entertainment. Amen. It's a spiritual. Well, I heard at this church down there, they do this and that. And I heard at that church down there, okay, well then, then go there. No, no one's holding you here. We're going to teach biblical principles. We're going to uplift the Word of God. We're going to uplift the Savior. We're going to try to say, what would Jesus do? And we're going to answer that. If you want to know what Jesus would do, just read the Bible and see what Jesus did. Amen. The three influencers in the life of a young person, the school, the church, the home. What's the home's responsibility? Along with character and morals... They combine the spiritual and the education to teach and train up a child. I've been serving the Lord now for over two decades. And it still takes me back a little bit when I hear people complain, well, if the church would have done a little bit more for this, then maybe my son or daughter wouldn't have. And I'm sorry that that person's son or daughter has gone off and whatever in different situations. But folks, listen. At best, your family is in church for about four hours in a given week. At best. It could be five if, if they come at 10 o'clock Sunday school hour too, if it carries over and stuff. But there's a good hundred and some odd people that just show up at 11 that never show up at 10. So at best, it could be up to five hours. And so where are they the rest of the time? Well, at school, let's just take it easy and say they go to school from 7.30 to about 2.30 or 3. And then if you want to throw in extracurricular activities... And then where are they the rest of the time? Home. Yet it's the church's fault. Responsibility. The outcome of Tim, Tiff, and Tab Fredericks is based on Clinton, Debbie Fredericks. I will give an account and stand before God for how I have parented those three children. It's my responsibility. Not the associate pastor of Freedom Baptist Church, but as the father of Tim, Tiff, and Tab. Yeah, well, if... Yeah, yeah. If my kids don't excel at school, it's not the teacher's fault. If I have not studied with them and reviewed with them and tried to help them find ways to get the right answer, and then if we've done all that, then I may need to meet with the teacher to find out where we're not on the same page. But if Johnny ain't learned, it doesn't necessarily mean the teacher didn't teach. 
I feel for some of our school teachers in here, and we've discussed this, that you've been given students who've passed through, and my wife was talking to someone, I was telling this to someone else, and they were giving kids almost a class that just passed through with failing grades, Brother Roy. And now this teacher needs to do their best to get them caught up and everything, and then this teacher's teaching ability is evaluated on one test that they give at the end of the semester. And that's not right. Because these students may not have a home in which they review and study and go over things. It's mom and dad's responsibility to train up a child in the way he should go. I had us in the book of Mark, chapter number 12, because we need core values to go with these core values, right? So what are we as uh, Christians, what's our responsibility? Well, uh, Mark chapter 12, verse 28, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first great commandment. The second is like unto it, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. What's the responsibility of a Christian? The responsibility of a Christian is to love God with all of his heart, with all of his soul, with all of his might, and with all of his strength. Not just a few hours a week. What is the responsibility of a Christian? To submit and resist. James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Before you can resist the devil and say, get thee behind me, you must submit yourself unto God. The responsibility of a Christian. I know you want me to give you some list of you shouldn't watch these shows and it's okay to watch those shows and you shouldn't rent these movies and you can watch those movies and you shouldn't go hear these people in concert but it's okay to hear these people in concert because they use the name of God every now and then and you shouldn't hang around this place. It's not a list of do's and don'ts. It's do you love God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. That's the responsibility. When you got married, Ralph, no one gave you a list and said, okay, you can't date these girls during the week, but you can date these girls during the weekend. And you can hang out. No, no, no. When you got married, you told her, man, I give you all of me until death do we part. <laughs> what is the responsibility of a Christian? Therefore, James 4, 17, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If you know you should do it, Nike, amen? Just do it. Galatians chapter 5, let me read this to you. What else should we as Christians be doing? We should be uh, uh, spiritual and restore. We should be spiritual and restore. Brethren, Galatians 6, 1, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. What's the responsibility of a Christian? Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Let me remind all of us here, this verse is not a promise. It's a principle. It's a principle that is not a blanketed guarantee that every child raised in a Christian home will be saved and live for God. It's a principle that we should try to apply. And if by the grace of God we've done a good job, there's a good chance that they will not let it depart from them. And they too will learn to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might, with all thy strength. My well, brother Roy, you've raised kids, and you've seen your kids raise kids. And I believe you know this as well as most older folks. Your kids really don't learn what you teach as much as what you do. My grandmother is 100 years old. 
I remember as a kid, she would sit on her little rocking chair and go, Japanese grandmother, right? Clinton, if you ever smoke a cigarette, I'll kill you. <laughs> Mom, Dad, just putting people on this property does not help them to grow as a Christian. Amen. The responsibility of the home is driving home. What did you guys hear in Sunday school today? What did your teacher teach on? Wow, that's good. So what do you think you can do this week to apply that in your life? That's our responsibility. To with morals and character, to take the spiritual and the education and put them together to train and teach our children. Are we fulfilling our responsibilities as moms and dads? Kids, I want you to fulfill your responsibility as children. I do want you to honor and obey. I do want you to hearken and be wise. I want you to despise not your parents. I want you to buy the truth and sell it not as taught in Proverbs 23 where it says, Hear thou my son and be wise and guide thine heart in the way. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee and despise not thy mother when she is old. Buy the truth, sell it not also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Moms, dads, let's live up to the biblical principles that we owe it to our children. We must command our kids. Proverbs 6.20 My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. I always thought that was weird. So dad has commandments and mom has laws. It was a big mystery to me until I realized. Mom cannot lay down the law when dad's not there if dad hasn't told everybody what the commandments are. Let's read this again. My son, keep thy father's commandments and forsake not the law of thy mother. Brother Jake Hyatt's here. He's one of our officers in the church. He doesn't make up the laws. He enforces them. And moms can only enforce what dad has commanded. That's why when I was a kid, we used to watch this cartoon called Wait Till Your Father Gets Home. Because dad used to run the house back then. And she would say, oh, you know you're not supposed to do that. But now we got moms that want to be BFFs with their kids. Come on, let's take a buffet fee. Woo-hoo, yeah, hey, we're going to go get skinny jeans and go hang out at the mall. I want to be your friend. They don't need a friend. They need a mama that prays for them every single day. They need a mama that says, hey, sweetie, maybe you ought not do that. I don't mean this bad. But think about, Haley, how much you pray for your friends. Think about Philip. I mean, these are your friends, right? These are your boys. Yeah. Think about how much you pray for them. Would you want your mom or dad to pray for you as much as you pray for your friends? Our kids don't need a BFF. They need a godly leader in their home to guide them, to train them up in the way they should go. And you know, we're real good at showing them ways they shouldn't go. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, and really don't do that, and don't do that, and don't be like him, and don't be like her, and don't be like da da da. We're telling them everything not to be. And that's not what it says. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. What are those people who work in our U.S. mints who deal with money? They study the real thing. And when that counterfeit bill comes in, they go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. There's just something different about this. Mom, Dad, we teach and train to go this way. And hopefully when your son or daughter gets to this spot, whoa, something doesn't seem right about this way. Mom and dad were trying to teach me ah, this way. Mom, dad, let's command according to Proverbs 6.29. Let's correct according to Proverbs 3.12. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Let's instruct, my son, hear the instruction of thy father. Proverbs 4.1, hear ye children the instruction of a father. Proverbs 13.1, a wise son heareth his father's instruction. Moms, dads, let's love. Psalm 103, 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. 
Let's teach Proverbs 10.1. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of mother. Let's give them absolutes. Let's give them laws. Let's teach them so they can honor and obey. My son, keep thy father's commandment. Forsake not the law of thy mother. Responsibility. Great in the Marine Corps. Greater in the life of a Christian. I wrote this down here. Let me see if I can read my writing and I'll finish. A similar Danish proverb to Proverbs 22.6, train up a child in the way she go, is, as the twig is bent, so goes the tree. The work of training children must begin when they're young. If you don't break the will when they first begin to manifest this rebellious, sinful nature, they will grow up to break your heart. I'm preaching this to those who have teens, yes. I'm preaching this to the Richies. I'm preaching this to, uh, uh, boy, we got a seven-year-old coming in now, boy, we got to preach it to you too and everybody. I'm preaching it to the hunters. I'm preaching it to those of us who are bringing up, this is the time. Don't wait, oh, if we can get them in the youth group. No, 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 it starts now. A young lady wrote the Chicago Tribune and asked this question and said, my 17-year-old son is breaking my heart. He doesn't listen, he's rude, he's hanging with the wrong crowd. What should I do? And Dan Landers answered and said, shrink him down to 17 months and start over. <laughs> You can never shrink down to 17 months. But I don't know how many times I've got up from an altar, made that drive home, sat the kids in the living room, and said, all right, guys, it's time to start over. Dad learned something tonight in church that I never heard before. And as a result of it, our family's no longer going to do this. And as a result of that, our family's going to have to start doing this a little bit more. Our family's not going to watch this particular television program anymore. It's not what's taught, it's what's caught. And to those of us who are not parents, maybe we're grandparents, you have those precious bundle of grandchildren. Let your children rear their children. You're not going to believe this, Nancy. I bragged on you in Connecticut. When our kids were little, Miss Nancy would always call Debbie and say, Clint's not home, is he? See, she's the one who didn't like me. <laughs> she would come over and maybe just help with laundry or do some things here or there and play with the kids a little bit. But Brother Roy, she didn't want to come over when I was there and steal time away from Mom and Dad. She planned her visits. And when Debbie would call and say, oh, no, man, and she'd name the child, they're doing this or that, what should I do? You'll figure it out, sweetie. You'll figure it out. Moms, dads, don't let grandma and grandpa discipline. Oh, bad boy, bad girl. You discipline. Mom and dad, you are to train up the child in the way they should go. Oh, let mom and let grandma and grandpa and poopa and mama and Nina, whatever you call them, let them spoil the baby like crazy. But you're going to give an account for your child. Yeah. Our responsibilities. Our responsibilities. Let's not just get them on the church property. Let's make sure they're learning. I reckon if <clears throat> planting a garden's easy, right, Brother Roy? You just put the seed in there, water it, let the sun work, and that's it. Well, then why does it my garden look like your garden? Same thing can be told with parenting. We don't just load them up in the car, come to the property and say, all right, whatever. It takes cultivating. Let's learn our responsibilities. Father in heaven, I pray tonight, God, that this weekend was so good for our young people. I was grateful for the instruction that many of our parents have given to their children to train them up. And it was almost an overflow. Sometimes you step back and you see someone do something. You say, hey, that was their daddy. Hey, that was their mama. Oh, what a sweet spirit. Oh, what a great personality. But God, it, it needs to be taught every day. 
May we learn our responsibilities as parents so our kids can do their responsibility as children, which is honor and obey. May we as Christians do our responsibilities to love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our might, with all of our strength. May we submit to you every day so we can look Satan right in the face and resist him. The reason we don't have the boldness to resist Satan is because we've not submitted to you. Oh Lord, responsibility, may it be prevalent in the life of each and every one of us here. And if there's one here tonight, oh God, who knows not for certain where they'd spend eternity, may you prick their heart and make them make that decision. It's their responsibility to trust you. You've done everything else. Bless the remainder of our time is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our heads are about to rise to close. Let's go ahead and stand. Miss Carla's just going to... Pastor White here. I want to thank you for tuning in to our live stream today. Uh, whether you watched it live or on YouTube uh, or maybe an archive sermon, thank you so much for taking the time to do so. And I wanted to conclude the message today by telling you a few things uh, about how God feels about you and us in general First of all, I want you to know today, if you're listening, God loves you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that means you, friend. And so I want you to know today God loves you. The second thing I want you to know is that all of us are sinners. We've all missed the mark. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark, every one of us. The Bible also says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then in Romans 10, 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to encourage you today, friend. There is hope for you. There's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you'd like to talk to someone about trusting Christ as your Savior, you can do so. You can reach us at the church here at area code 336-969-6937 or you can reach us on our website at freedombaptistrh.com where we'll have more information about salvation. And we'd love for you to let us know of your decision for Jesus Christ today. If you need prayer, if you need encouragement, please don't hesitate to call or email or visit our website. And we trust that you'll find the help needed in the Lord Jesus Christ. May you have a wonderful day. And may God bless you. Thank you.